Um, I was asked by Stephen Tomkinson and Sean Prendergast to direct the uh, rehearsed reading at the Arts Theatre in the West End and I had already worked with Steve Tomkinson at uh, the Royal Exchange in Manchester doing Revenge's Tragedy which was also quite a dark violent uh, story really and Steve's not always associated with that sort of darker material although the DCI bank stuff which he started to do is more of that so I think he's re he really appreciates the chance to show that side of his repertoire but uh, that's, that's how it started because I'd already I'd already cast Stephen in uh, the Royal Exchange in Manchester, and so we really enjoyed working together. We were looking for another project to do together, and that's really how, it's, how it happened. They're really, really good bunch of people. A lot of it is in the casting and getting the, getting the right people for the right for the roles, and they're all very intelligent, very sparky, and there's a lot of laughter in rehearsals. Um, is that the thing I was mentioning? For about you know if you're if you're relaxed then you know if you're laughing you're relaxed and if you're relaxed you can come up with your best work really I'm really a believer in making the actor feel comfortable in the room lots of laughter lots of um, fun uh, it's not called play for nothing you know it's uh, it, it should be a playful happy experience especially when you're dealing with dark material. Uh, Gabriel Byrne was saying that when he was doing uh, Usual Suspects he's never had so much fun in his life and yet the actual piece is very dark and it's often the way with dark material that you almost need that kind of light and fun and joy uh, what, to sort of protect your soul a little bit you know? so yeah they're a wonderful group of actors and because I'm an actor myself it's all it's, um, the text is very very important especially with a new play obviously and with any play but the promise of the actor is something that I'm very interested in and very con uh, alive to in that way because I really respect their process and what they do and I think it takes an awful lot of courage to be an actor and get up there so you've got to give them as much love as you can you know, and a much support and encouragement you know, straight when you need to be but in a, in a, loving, in a loving way as much as you can you know. I think they're all advantages really. I think I've worked in all sorts of configurations. I've worked with the audience either side of the stage, Travis. I've worked at the Royal Exchange a lot, which is completely in the round. So it's much more demanding for a, for a director to do that. In a proscenium arch, you know, theatre where you've got the audience just one side and the actors the other. Um, it's much less challenging, but I quite like the fact of live, that, that it, the fact that it's on a, on a kind of angle, a corner of the room. It just means that the audience can really feel that they're surrounding the action, part of the action. And it's more like the exchange, it's more like real life. Because in real life you do sometimes see the side of somebody. You do sometimes see the back of someone for a, for a, for a, for a few moments. You feel that you're very, it's, it's much more true to life actually, a space like live, than any kind of, you know, more formal uh, proscenium arch theatre could be. So no, I'm, I, I, I see them all as, all as advantages. I mean, there are challenges spatially with the design and what you can reveal and what you can't reveal and, uh, and all the rest of it. But, um, but I think it, it, it forces you to be really on your game, a space like this, because you can't just do easy, you know, relaxed, uh, cliché stuff. You have to constantly be uh, looking at it almost in the round, but certainly from you know, three quarters of the space, because that's where the audience is sitting. And when I'm directing it, I'm always bombing around the room, just making sure that all the angles are covered. Um, that's a good question. I think uh, I approach it all as theatre. You know, it's all it's all it's all drama, and I direct opera singers in exactly the same way as I direct actors. It just takes longer for information to be imparted because you've got the music. So if they're singing an aria, they still have to be thinking those thoughts, but they're just the thoughts are more sustained. But the actual process of directing the drama side of it is really important. But that's why I can only work with certain kinds of opera singers, i.e opera singers who can, uh, who can move and sing at the same time, because it does help. Um, I once had an opera singer saying to me, I'm sorry, I can't point and sing at the same time. So, you know, what's the point? If we're going to do 21st century opera, it has to, it has to be moving with the times, you know. So as far as I can see, it's, it's, it's very similar in terms of how, how you direct the acting side of it.
Well, I hope, I hope they're, they're entertained by it. I hope they're moved by it. I hope that it raises questions of faith and faith in their own lives and uh, the importance of faith. Uh, but also, I, I hope it's ultimately a, a life-affirming uh, play uh, production about uh, the importance of all human life, you know. And that's why when we've been working on the balance in the play, um, that we've just stepped back from cliche all the time. So it can't just be a play, you know, something terrible happens to somebody. Or we've seen that a million times on stage or in a movie. Um, it's to find the reality of what that might actually feel like if you're seeing someone going through that. So I think that's... Uh, I, I'd like them to come away with, um, with, a, with, 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 with a feeling that they've seen something powerful that they've laughed, that they've, um, you know, that, 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 that they've been made to think a bit as well as being entertained.